So u substitution, we're going to start out with the chain rule to see where it comes from. So what is the derivative of f of g of x? So it's f prime g of x. What's next? Times g prime of x. So that's the derivative of f of g. Remember, the derivative is not this. So that is not the chain rule. That is, I don't know what that is, but certainly not the chain rule. So don't do that. We'll get rid of that right there. So I'm going to make some variable changes. You let u equal g of x. du dx will be g prime of x. And treating du dx like a fraction, so I'm going to make some substitutions now. So we're going to integrate. So we're going to begin with this integral right here. Now I've set it up to be uh, the antiderivative right out of the chain rule. So I just picked the chain rule right there, what we got originally. All I did was I multiplied basically by dx on the right side. So we're going to make some substitutions here. g prime x dx is du. And what is f of g of x? That's just u right there. So this integral turns into u du. Oh, uh-oh. That's not u. What goes there instead? Oh, yeah, f of u or f u g u. All right, so we can turn a more complicated looking integral into something easier if we have a very good u that has a derivative that's already hanging out right there. Would that be a du dx? Is this the dx from the original integral carry over? Uh, hold on. Uh, what was the question? The dx in your original integral, does that get transferred to your? No. So, so what I just underlined, the g prime x dx, mm -hmm. that turns into du. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to choose, you're going to choose u. Oh, then you take a derivative of that. Yeah, you're going to choose that and then take a derivative and then substitute. Yeah. So let's go through, I have four, no, I have six, six examples we're going to do. And that's all we're going to do in this section. So we're just going to do example after example after example. You can integrate this without any u substitution whatsoever. So if I asked you to integrate this in Calc 1 class without u substitution, what would you have to do before any calculus? It's just a polynomial. So we know antiderivative is a polynomial, it's just the anti-power rule a few times. So what algebra could I do to turn this into a standard form polynomial? Well, I can't bring the 5 through. So that, what does that 5 mean? So I can multiply it out by itself 5 times, and then multiply it out by that 3x squared plus 1 and get some whatever degree polynomial, 15, 17 degree polynomial, and then do the power rule on all the terms. So I could definitely do that. Don't really want to, but I could. Let's instead pick our u. 
So is there something here that has a derivative that is somewhere else? Or is there a term or an expression here whose derivative is, appears somewhere else? So we got x cubed plus x, derivative is 3x squared plus 1. So that you have to see for the u substitution to work. So I'm going to intentionally choose a bad u, and we'll see what happens. So it's not going to be a wrong u, but it's going to be u that doesn't let me, uh -oh, doesn't let me move forward. And I'll do this all in blue. So du dx will be 6x. So why is this a bad choice? Do we have a 6x dx? No, we don't have a 6x anywhere. So that 6 is not going to be very helpful right there. So this u substitution is out. And we're going to make a different one. And I'll do this one in the black. Choose u equal x cubed plus x du dx. When you take the derivative, what you don't want to do is look up and write down what you're hoping that it is. So that's a bad move to make. So don't look and see, oh, it, it would be really nice if it was this thing. Just take the derivative 3x squared plus 1 <coughs> by just looking at u to find du. And then you're going to generally solve for du. by multiplying by dx. So I'm going to underline the same way I did before. So we've got a du part and a u part. So this is almost correct. So this is almost u du. What did I leave out? So it should be u to the fifth power. It was that thing that I said was u, but fifth power needs to hang around. Can you take an antiderivative of u to the fifth? So now you have to remember your antiderivative rules is really the anti-power rule. So add one to the power. So I'm going to do the guess and check method. So I think it's u to the sixth. There's going to be a plus a constant. But now I'm going to check. Well, I add a one to the power. What's the derivative of u to the sixth? It's u to the fifth times six, or six times u to the fifth. So I need the 1 6 to compensate for that. So now I take a derivative, and I'll get u to the fifth. So I like to do a guess and check. Uh, you could also write down the antiderivative rules, uh, however you like to, to go about that. So I got 1 6 u to the 6 plus c. I can't leave my answer like this, because what is u? u is something I made up because I wasn't smart enough to take the antiderivative in the first place. So I need to unsubstitute out u put back in x. So there is my final answer back in the variable I started with. So we use u for, uh, as a tool, it's like if you did work and then left all your scaffolding and painter's tape up everywhere and said, ah, oh, it's good enough. Take all that stuff back down so you actually have a finished product. So there's our first use substitution. This class, we're going to spend a huge amount of time on antiderivatives. How do I know if my antiderivative, how do I know if this is actually correct? I put a, well, it's almost a box. I put a box around this. How do I know if this is correct? Take a derivative. Take derivative. So you can check all your antiderivatives, all your integrals, by taking derivatives. And usually the taking derivative part takes 10% of the time that it took to get there. So if you're on a quiz midterm, uh, that could be useful. If you're on web work, trying to realize why this isn't working, you can take a derivative that might give you some insight into, oh, this should have been maybe a third or something like that. So you can, uh, a lot of times, figure out on web work your problem by taking a derivative. Because it's almost always going to be easier than the antiderivative to get there. And believe me, we're going to learn some antiderivative methods that are going to be uh, very difficult to do. So 
So next example. So step one in calculus class, whenever you have a square root or any root, write it as a fractional power. So I'd like to use the power rule. The only problem is it's not just x to the 1 half. If it was just x to the half, I could add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, and be done. So what we're going to do is obviously use substitution. One good thing to do is start at wherever you see x and sort of move out from there. So I'm going to make the most useless use substitution you can do, and I'll do it in blue. So let u equal x. What is the derivative of x? 1. 1. So if I let u equal x, that means du equals dx. So I'm going to make this substitution. There we go. x was replaced by u, and dx replaced by du. So what did I accomplish? Nothing. Nothing. I just changed the, na the letter. That's all I did. All right, so that is a useless u substitution. So forget that one. Not wrong, it's just not helpful. And we're going to choose a different one. Let. All right, what's another reasonable guess? 2x plus 1. So let's go 2x plus 1. I could do 2x plus 1 to the half power, but then I have a chain rule, so let's. I like to go pick from easiest to more difficult. So I like to start things that are a little bit smaller, and if that doesn't work, kind of build out from there. So I'm going to start with the 2x plus 1. And now du is going to be 2. So du is 2 dx. So I see a dx. I don't see a 2 hanging out next to it. So all I need to do is multiply both sides by a half. So I'm just going to move the 2 out of there. So 1 half du equals dx. Sometimes you have to move the multiple, the scalar multiple to the other side. So we're going to do that here. So this is going to be integral u to the half power. dx is 1 half du. A constant multiple rule, this 1 half can move outside. And we're going to do the anti-power rule now. Guess and check. I know I'm going to need another multiple. Do not add one incorrectly. I know fractions are tricky. You got one half, you're adding two more halves, you get three halves. So make sure you're a little bit careful when you add one to fractions, especially if they're already negative, something like that. All right, guess and check. The derivative will be 3 halves times u to the 1 half. So I need to compensate, multiply by 2 thirds. So when I take derivative, that will cancel back out. Don't forget your constant. And we can clean this up a little bit. 1 third u is 2x plus 1. And there we go. That is our antiderivative. And again, checking relatively quick. Just go through and take derivative. And you just got one little chain rule, and you should get right back to 2x plus 1 square root. And you can see it actually right here. If you look carefully, taking a derivative is going to be multiplying by 3 halves, so that 3 will cancel to the third. That you'll get an extra 1 half out here, but the chain rule will give you a times 2. But the good news is the u substitution, it takes care of all that stuff for you. You might be able to sort of guess what your antiderivative is without doing u sub. The further you go in calculus, the more complicated ones you'd be able to guess without u substitution. But for now, u substitution is a very good tool to solve integrals.
So now we have a d theta integral. We're in the u substitution section. So obviously our first step is let u equal something. What is a reasonable choice here? Seven theta plus three. Yeah, let's try seven theta plus three. So I know if I just go with theta, that's just going to turn everything into a u integral. So that won't accomplish anything. So go a little bit bigger. We'll do seven theta plus three. Now, this is not du dx. This is du d theta. All right, so take the theta derivative and then solve for uh, du. You're probably going to have to uh, move a constant multiple back to the other side, like we did on the previous example. So go ahead, take this derivative. Just remember theta is your variable right here. So take this derivative and go and make your substitution. This will be a lot like that last problem. Any questions on the U sub on the board? Now you're going to find that you don't need to show every single step going through. So some of the steps you can skip. Uh, we need to do 1 7th du. So I could write the 1 7th right here next to the du. But I know the constant multiple rule lets me take that 1 7th and move it outside the integral. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump right to that. So I'm going to put that constant multiple out front instead of inside. There's another step I'm going to skip. And it's going to be that step right there. That might seem a little crazy. But if u is 7 theta plus 3, du is just a derivative of that times d theta. So I'm going to skip that intermediate step as well. I'll leave it up here for now, but that's the one I'm going to be skipping. You can absolutely use all, uh, show all the intermediate steps uh, when you're in your homework, your quiz, whatever. The more intermediate steps, generally the more intermediate steps I see, the easier it is to assign partial credit. I do know when you're bluffing. I've done a lot of math, played some poker. So I know if you're bluffing and you don't know what you're talking about, I'll figure that out relatively quickly. So if you have a um, full page answer to something that I gave you two or three vertical inches to write in, chances are you're probably not um, on the right track. So show intermediate steps, but you don't have to go crazy. All right, antiderivative cosine. So is it positive or negative sine? That's always a little tricky to memorize. So what I'm going to do is guess and check. Hopefully you remember derivative of sine is regular cosine. I don't have the antiderivatives memorized. I have some idea of what they are, but I just guess and then I check. So derivative of sine is regular cosine, so this is what we want. And of course, don't want u's in here. So this is sine 7 theta plus 3. This particular example, you may have been able to take an antiderivative of just looking at it, there's going to be a chain rule happening with an extra 7, so I have to compensate with a 1 7th. So some of these you will be able to uh, sort of guess in your head of what the antiderivative is going to be. So 
So we got three more to go. That is 2z, yes. So my z's and my 7's have uh, the vertical line in the middle of them. I think that's a European thing. But if you don't do that, your z's look just like your 2's. Or at least my z's look just like my 2's. All right, we're in the u subsection. So obviously our first step is let u equal something. What is a good something? I thought our first step would be to change that uh, third square root into the oh. That's a good idea. <coughs> All right, so what is a good U substitution? So let's try Z squared plus one. What is derivative of Z squared plus one? 2z, and we're going to get a dz because we got z's on the right side. So I'm skipping that uh, du dz and just going right to the distributive version right there. And you're absolutely free to show that intermediate step if you want to go have a du dz and then go to this step. All right, this is perfect. 2z dz, I can't really underline below, but I'll go above. 2z times dz right there. So the entire, pretty much the entire numerator is du. And then the z squared plus 1 is u to the 1 third. I can't quite do the anti-power rule yet. There's no anti-quotient rule. So there's, that's definitely never going to work. What do you do if your calculus brain won't solve this for you? Algebra. Yep, switch over to algebra. So how can I rewrite this with a different, a different way algebraically? Yep, so we got a reciprocal, so that means negative. Now you can do the anti-power rule. So I'm pumping the power up by one, and write that number down, and then figure out what constant multiple you get in front. So do that right now. You can always check these relatively easily. Take a derivative. <coughs> Are there any questions on this problem? So this next problem is a really weird u substitution is weird so obviously we're in u substitution so we're going to make u equals so u equals x is useless we've seen that before it's not going to help us so don't even try it what's the other reasonable choice to make here 2x plus 1 so start small and then go bigger so the next, after x, which is useless, the next bigger thing is 2x plus 1. If that didn't work, it would be 2x plus 1 square rooted. That would be my choice after that. All right, du 2 dx. So right there we have, I'm going to go ahead and go u to the 1 half. Now I don't have a 2, so it's 1 half du equals dx. What is the problem with my u substitution? Still have an x. Oh yeah, I went u's, 
but you have to go all use. It's like if you get on a boat. You can't put one foot on the dock and one foot on the boat for too long. You gotta make a move. For the where it says let u equal that. Yep. Did you do algebra to put the x on the opposite side? Yeah, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I wrote that in red because we gotta get rid of it. So we'll get rid of it tomorrow, do some algebra, and it won't be too bad. But this is a slightly a u substitution that feels a little bit different than the other ones we did.